CPUs are pretty versatile but are also very slow for specific calculations. When you need some heavy computation done, you need processing units with optimized silicon to get the job done. See your computer as a company. If you ask the CEO to make the coffee for all employees, the business will crash. Or maybe not, but you get the point. So the CPU would be your CEO and the heavy computing would be the coffee making in this example. And you need an intern to do the coffee just like you need a GPU to display this very video you're watching right now. as it is more efficient and unloads this burden from your CPU. But you might have the best GPU in the world to run your crypto rig, one problem still remains, memory. Memory accesses are very slow and are one of the main speed limiting factors for modern computations. With that being said, if you rely on your CPU to process a real-time stream of data, a very bad idea would be to ask him to also handle all the memory transactions within the system. That's where DMA comes into play. DMA, or direct memory access, allows you to use your CPU to initiate memory transactions across your system, allowing compute units to access memory on their own and thus giving more time to the CPU to do some actual thinking. This way, your CPU does not have to support the burden of playing the role of the main man and can ask DMA to do it for him, just like an intern. In this video, we will see how to implement a simple DMA IP over the XI protocol in order to compute the fast Fourier transform of a set of complex numbers. To start with DMA on Zinc FPGA, first create a new blank Vivado project. Start by adding your processing system and we will start by configuring it. Then enable the HPXI port in order to use the XI stream interface in high performance mode. Then add the DMA to your system. It will act as a coprocessor that will handle the data transactions while the CPU can go and do its own thing. First set the data width to 64 bits and we will use a complex float number data type that uses 64 bits of memory space. Do the same for the right channel. Also, disable the scattergather engine, as we will declare our data by hand, meaning it will be contiguous in memory. Then run the connection automation. This will connect the XI light port between DMA and PS with PS as a master. Place the FFT IP in the design and double click on it to configure it. Choose 8 as the transform length. This is the number of samples you will perform the FFT on. The more data you have, the better it is for precision, but the algorithm will run slow even though O and log the N is pretty damn good for this algorithm. Don't forget to specify that we'll be using floating points as the data format and we'll also select natural order as the output ordering. With this being done, we can now connect manually the data path that will make the stream go into the FFT and gather the output back into DMA to convert the stream back to memory map. Hey guys, a quick side note because I forgot to do the XI stream configuration. So you will be hearing me with a bad microphone that I used during the actual voiceover on Vivado. Uh, it will be the same microphone with the software side. I'm sorry about that. And uh, I hope you guys understand and have a great tutorial. Now, as you can see here, we have some XI stream config to prepare. We'll do this by adding some constants. We have a config valid. And so to this, we are going to send a one. This is already one, so this is cool. All right, so here the width will be eight bits, seven to zero, and the value will be one, two. And so we are done with the config. So we will run connection automation. It will pretty much plug in everything we need, except clock here. All right, that will plug to this one, yes. Now you can run the block automation, validate, and create the HTR wrapper and export the big stream. Once this is done, export the hardware and create a new platform on Vitis. All the code is on Git. Hub, I will only focus on the important code logic in this video. Big news for this video, I'll be talking in real time to take you through the software part. So first of all, we'll include, as usual, X parameters, which, DMA, which, these are the drivers for the DMA IP. And then what we'll do is define FFT points. It's eight. First of all, what we we'll do is declare our XIDMA instance, so we'll name it XIDMA. And what we're gonna do is say int status equals to init DMA, and we'll pass it XXIDMA address. So this function doesn't exist, so we have to create it. So what we'll do first of all is create uh, a config pointer. As you can see, it has a base address. Uh, it will just look for the features of your XIDMA hardware. 
So then to actually configure it, the config pointer equals to look up the config at the base address. So where is this defined? It's in X parameters of H. So you just copy this, this is your address and you include the file and you can just paste it here and it will look up for the config and everything will be all right. Then what we'll do is just, a, do we have a pointer? Is it actually not null? We're gonna initialize the DMA and see if it succeeded and also check if we have scatter gather mode uh, enabled. I added this because I forgot during my previous testing to actually put it on. You don't need to check for that, but it's good measure, good practice to actually check for this. So once the init DMA is done, what we'll do is say if status is not equal to xst access printf return one for error then what you want to do is create those two buffers uh, one buffer is the tx buffer this is data we're going to send to the FFT through DMA. And the other one, our X buffer, is the one that will hold the data that we'll get from the FFT using DMA. So this will create space in memory and is going to be filled directly by the DMA and handled by the DMA and not by the processing system itself. So don't forget to include complex.h. This is a library that handles complex numbers. And this is important because the FFT will return some complex numbers. So here, as you can see, I copy pasted some old code. So DMA buffer for size, I will replace this by the number of FFT points. And then what we'll do is fill the TX buffer with actual data. To do this, we'll use a sim simple for loop X buffer I equals to I. So this is a way to just fill our TX buffer with data. Uh, we could put whatever we want. And a natural good use case for real life would be to put a signal into that, like uh, my voice, actually, I'm speaking to you. This is a stream of data that you will send to your FFT and send it back to DMA and directly write to memory. So that would be a great application for this. So then what you want to do is actually flush the cache. Why? Because cache is like a piece of very fast memory, it doesn't apply immediately to the real memory of your system. Some system does that, it's called cache coherency. For good measure, we will flush the cache and flushing the cache, what it will do is update the memory to be coherent with your cache. Then what you want to do is start the transfer. So to do that, we'll just call the XXIDMA simple transfer. Very simple function and the way you use it is you just send it the address of your XIDMA and then your TX buffer as a uint pointer and then the size of your transfer here. The size of your transfer will be 16 times 8. This will be 128 bytes. You know, simple transfer. And then it's very important to specify the way your data will go. So this is just zero and the other one is one. But we call them like this. And then the same thing, but the other way. Use your Rx buffer this time. Each time you check if the status is a success, of course. And then once this is done, you just use a loop to check to poll if everything is over. And so once this is done, you can just print the results like this. So we are going to build this and run this. Open a PuD terminal quick, quick, quick before it's, before it's done. All right, I think I got it. Yes, I got it, all right. As you can see, everything works out fine. So this is French. I know, I know this is French. So this is how you get a complex FFT done, all right and I hope you liked it. All right, so this is the end of this tutorial. It was a little bit special for me to talk in face cam. I hope you liked it. And I think it was necessary for me to really explain concepts. And don't forget to like and subscribe in order not to miss my upcoming contents on SOC.